Abend alles. Wie geht es euch? Okay, so. Uh, mein Name ist Steff und ich komme aus Australien, so tut mir leid, wenn mein Deutsch nicht so gut ist. Also meistens spreche ich auf Englisch, aber wir beginnen auf Deutsch. Also mein Fach ist die Reproduktionsbiologie und das meint, ich interessiere mich für Sex. Also, ich habe eine Frage für euch. Was? Was, what do you think when I say the word sex? <laughs> I think you're probably thinking about how babies are made, right? Yeah. But sex or das Geschlecht can also just mean whether an animal is male or female. And so this is the thing that I'm really interested in studying because lots of animals need to reproduce by males and females coming together. So we need to make male and female animals in the first place. And how does this happen? Well, I'm trying to answer this question in a very interesting species. I am studying worms. But I think you're probably wondering, why should we study sex in worms, or das Geschlecht in worms? And what are these worms? And what makes them so sexy? Well, I'll tell you. So, these, oh, it's upside down. These are the worms that I am studying. These are called Platinarius dumerli, and they're somewhat related to the worms that you find in your garden, except these are a bit different. They live in the ocean, which makes them really cool. And what happens with these worms is for most of their lives, they look like this. So we can't tell whether they're male or female. Sie haben keines Geschlecht. So, But when these worms want to start to reproduce and make babies, which they only do once in their life, then they start to look like this. Können Sie alles sehen? Okay. So, when the worms want to have babies, they very quickly turn from what I just showed you into males and females. Also, die männlichen Würmer werden rot und weiß und für die andere Seite. Und die weiblichen Würmer werden gelb. Und vor beide Seite. So, you can see that when they become male and female, they look very different. And what I want to know is, how does this process happen? But the reason that I want to work in these worms is because they have a very cool way of reproducing. Now, Worms don't have Facebook, and they don't have watches. So how do they know when they need to find each other in the ocean to come together and make babies? Well, these worms do it in a really cool and clever way. They've learned how to tell the time by looking at the moon. And they look at the moon because they like to reproduce at night time, and they like it to be dark. So they need to know when it's bright at night time, which is what happens when we have technical difficulties, uh, full moon, a full moon, so there's lots of light, but two weeks after the full moon comes new moon, when there is no moon. So this is nice and dark, so it means that the worms can come to the surface and have their babies without worrying about other animals seeing them and coming to eat them. <laughs> and I bet you're all wondering how they do it. Well, I'm going to show you, because it's more fun than telling. But <laughs> In order to show you how these worms have reproductive, reproductive interactions, I'm going to bring some friends onto the stage. So please, everybody, give a warm welcome to my yellow female worm, Olga. <laughs> and my strapping bright red and white worm, Natalia. <laughs> Woo! So let's begin. Let's begin at the full moon. At the full moon, the worms are already male and female, but they're just spread across the ocean floor, crawling around, minding their own business. Oh, technical difficulties. But as the moon begins to come to new moon, the worms decide, why wow, they need to find each other. And so they start to swim around in the water, and they send out chemical messages to each other so that they can look for each other and find, find the opposite sex. So when the male worm and female worm senses the male worm's chemicals, she swims towards him and she gets a bit excited and she starts to swim around him in circles. 
And then the male worm senses the female worm's chemicals and gets really excited. And they swim around each other, and after some minutes, the male worm gets so excited that he releases his sperm. <laughs> and this makes the female worm even more excited, and she releases her eggs. <laughs> and both of the worms swim together around in circles, fertilizing the eggs with the sperm. It's very energetic. And this is how baby Platinarius worms are born. So now that the uh, strapping male and the lovely female worms have completed their nuptial dance, they're very tired. So let's let Natalia and Olga go backstage to rest and give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Whew, that was exciting. So, uh, I hope you can appreciate how cool reproduction is in these worms and why I would want to try and find out what makes them male and female in the first place. And I want to remind you how exciting this is because these worms go from looking like this and having keines Geschlecht to looking like this in just a short amount of time. So, how exactly are they doing it? Well, this is a question that my research is trying to answer. And I have two ideas about how they can be doing this. First of all, they could be using hormones. Second of all, they could be using genes. So I want to look at how these genes and hormones are different in male and female worms, and then when I figure this out, I will really know what makes worms sexy. And I wish you all a schönen Abend und danke fürs Zuhören.